Hello and welcome to the last episode in this first season of the Expert 11 Road to Glory series. In the last part, we secured promotion by beating Godston's Knights away from home 2-0. And in this episode, we're going to be playing the final two games of the season for development only. The aim is to maximise DV gains for the youngsters so we can have a very good change report at the end of the season. So here goes nothing. Team news for the Roma United game is Aratani in goal. A back three of Gorga, Van der Kreis and Santa Maria. A midfield of Alonso, Canamassas, Roddick, Clean and Hargreaves. And a front two of Mota and Casado. You may notice I put Rufus Roddick in midfield. This is because he is an all-rounder and has less of a reduction in skill when playing in other positions. All-rounders play 80% to their skill when out of position, while every other player plays 65% to their skill when out of position. In addition, all-rounders will also play better in goal than other outfield players. It also means that the better the player is, the bigger skill drop he will have from playing out of position. You may remember I played a 5-3-2 formation against Roma United earlier in the season. Well, it's a bit of a role reversal this time, they've decided to play a 5-3-2 formation. They're going with Cecchini in goal, a back 5 of Patuzzi, Bart, Antas, Mirko and Markison. A midfield of Postiga, Jesha Levy and Pazniku, and a front two of Vidiera and Zapetti. To be fair to Roma United, they were kind of forced into this formation due to the fact that they are missing Nicholas Bjorkland through suspension or injury. Roma United are also chasing promotion, and a win against us would see them promoted to Division 6 with us. And since we're playing for development, I see that as a very likely scenario. So let's go live to the Resistance Arena for the penultimate match of the season. Captains are Gavril Gorga and Valentina Ciccini. Nice to see Jenny with the red strip, while Roma United in the white strip due to a colour clash. The referee is Sen Cole. The game gets underway. Now, I'm afraid I can't shout during this game because we've got a sore neck, but Postigo, the well placed header. And the ball is stopped by Aratani. This is a game for development anyway, so a speedy up so it's on maximum speed. Free kick to Roma United, Iguadera. And again, Aratani stops the ball. We aren't second for nothing, I guess, but even though so, we just did a game for development. So, Pessi. Breakthrough! Goal for Roma United! 1 0 to them, Amidio Zapesi with Marco Antas with the assist. And a card for Roma United here. Estasio Videra, their top scorer, yellow card for Bruce Player. We've got an injury! Pim van der Kreese has been slightly injured. But that's a bit of a relief, so not a major injury. He's in top form at the moment. First start in ages, but Postiga curls right outside the box and it's easily caught by Arasani. And we've got no chance here for Roma United. Videra scores! Like he has done all season. The second highest scorer in this division. Eustazio Videra is firing Roma United to promotion. They've got another card here. Has Niku for yellow card for elbowing. And a free kick to Knights of Sidonia. Rufus Roddick head on the ball. And it sails over the crossbar. And that's is half time. In that first half, Roma United definitely the better team so far, regardless of the fact that we're playing for development. Used from the other games in the second half, and it looks like that will go long back south and Sergio Canamassas. Centimeters over the crossbar. But yeah, the, the great Belfast City are knocking in goals at the moment. It looks like they are going to be promoted as champions from this division. In fact, as seen San, everything is going to be decided. Roma United have a free hit pass on Pazniku. Smashes into the post. But yeah, as things stand, Belfast City will win the division. We will be second. Roma United will be third. Meaning everyone from fourth downwards has nothing to play for. So in some ways, my decision to play for development here is to decide the entire division. Marius Queen's been yellow card for dangerous play here. They've got a ton of chances on both sides. And they've got another chance on Roma United. Miracle! And the goalkeeper steers the ball outside the post. Early on in the season, Roma United scored with their very last chance of the game. But as it stands, they win 2 0. They are promoted to Division 6 with us. Congratulations to Roma United on their promotion to Division 6. And they did actually outguess us on the tactics stakes by defending against their attacking style. 
We defended against their attacking style, but ultimately that came to nothing, and as a result, the stronger lineup came through and won the game. So, congrats to Rome United on promotion, and congrats to Belfast City on winning the division. Maybe we'll see you both next season. Not surprisingly, since we were playing for development and left out many of our A grade names, none of our players are in the team of the week this time. The team of the week is Barella Belfast City. Back four is Svensson Belfast City. Vartz, Rome United. Beistroff Belfast City. And Kulazic Belfast City. Hurricane United's late surge continues with Balthazar Coelho Hurricane United. Norris Norton Belfast City. Raven Barkerville Red FC. Mario Balotelli Belfast City. And the front two, Runa Soderlin, Belfast City, and Michael McCauley, Belfast City. Rome United manager J2110 was manager of the round, and I'd say that's a fair reward for his win over me, and getting promotion. It was a welcome boost in the DV stakes though, as Pim van der Kreese has managed to reach an incredible 18 DV. Meanwhile, Sergio Canamassas, Marius Kleen, and Raymond Hargreaves have all reached 17 DV. However, there are also a few players here who look like they aren't going to reach that coveted 17 DV mark, including goalkeeper Arasani and Jose Juan Casado and Xavi Alonso as well, which is a shame really, but we have to do our best and sometimes you can't always get what you want. It appears we also guaranteed no skill drops in midfield, which is welcome I guess. So Belfast City won 4-0 to confirm their status as champions of Division 739. We have finished second with 27 points, there's still a round to go, remember? Rome United have secured promotion with 22 points, three ahead of Hurricane United with a vastly better goal difference. Hurricane United would have to beat us by a massive margin and hope that Rome United lose in order to secure promotion. Meanwhile, the rest of the league reads Red FC in fifth, Gosselton's Knights sixth, AATB seventh, and Random Hearts eighth on just four points. We will now skip ahead to the following week, where we will play for development again in the final league game of the season. This time we'll play a 3-4-3 formation so we can get all our oldies on the field to help these young guys get that final DV boost they need to get a good change report. We have Aratani in goal, the back three of Gorga, Roddick and Santa Maria, a midfield four of Alonso, Kanamasas, Kiviatkovsky and Hargreaves, and a front three of Mosa, McQuiston and Casado. This should be an interesting game. We're probably going to lose it again because Hurricane United are chasing promotion although they have nothing to play for. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. The answer? Don't even bother to set tactics. As a result, loads of players are out of position in this Hurricane United side. We've got Baptista in goal, a back three of a defender, midfielder and a striker with two feet the defender, Dagger the striker and Sonsa the midfielder. The midfielder have all midfielders here, Barela, Weavy, Igrias, Coelho and Harley. And a front two of defender Teodoro Nobre and striker Tadio Levia. Because they forgot to set tactics, what it was looking like to be a loss, we're actually going to probably end this season with an easy win in the end. But anyway, let's go live to the Hurricane United Arena for the final match of the season. Hurricane United are in the yellow strip, the Manchester City are in the red strip. Teodoro Nobre and Sammy McQuiston are the captains, and the referee is Hugh Kango. And the game gets underway... Now! And there's an injury! And it's Raymond Hargreaves who's got a nasty injury in the final game of the season. That is bad luck and Pyramid Mahaya comes in to replace him. That is bad news for Raymond Hargreaves who's doing so well, but fortunately it's the last game of the season. Shouldn't make this development, but Sammy McQuiston wide by a clear margin. 12 minutes in, we've had one chance so far and a major injury to one of our young midfielders. They've got an injury too. Venus Baptiste has got a slight injury here. Look, going towards the end of the half and now here comes Sammy McQuiston. Scores! Sammy McQuiston for Knights of Sidonia. Assisted by Jose Juan Casada. Good to see the youngsters getting in on the act. Sammy McQuiston hasn't scored much this season, but it's good for him to score now. And then the half was 1 0 to us. And let's start the second half now. So Hurricane United have dominated the possession so far, but we're 1-0 ahead thanks to him for getting to set tactics. Gavin Ball the free kick. And it's easily handled by Baptista. Baptista slightly injured, so just makes it easier for us, but here comes Hurricane United with a chance. Levia Makes a leg save. Aratani makes the leg save. Oh, even not Levia. Anyway, another chance here. Sergio Canamasas! 
and it goes out of play for a goal kick. Well, we're getting towards the end of the season now, just five minutes left of the season. Motor scores! Kelso Motor scores the 44th goal in this season for Knights of Sidonia, and that is the end of the game and the end of the season. Well, good to end the season with a win, I guess. Gavril Gorga, man of the match for us. 2-0 win for us. What a season. And that's it. That was season 29 of the Ultimate League in Division 739. And next season, we'll be playing our trade in Division 6. I can't wait to get started, but first... We will need to see the results of our development as that will affect the change in player skill very very soon. But first to the final team of the season. We have Cicini, Roma United in goal. Back four of Bertuzzi, Roma United. Gorga, Knights of Sidonia. Svensson, Belfast City. And Bystrop, Belfast City. A midfield of Barkable, Red FC. Sarsil, Belfast City. Norton, Belfast City. Costanzo, Goldstone's Knights. And a front two of Sammy McQuiston, Knights of Sidonia. And Runa Sojlin, Belfast City. I obviously manager of the round despite the fact that I took on an inactive team and was playing for development. But nevertheless, we've got a good reward for the last game of the season. It's been the best season in the club's history and we did it with a squad that didn't even come close to the strongest squads in the division. Now for the most important DV checkup of the season. You may notice that several members of this squad are currently in training. This is one of the secrets to a good change report and the reasons they're all in training at the moment is so that the day after the change report, they'll all go back to having positive form tendencies. So you can see some of the form they've been carrying throughout the season and get an idea of how these players will develop. The most important factor here is the DV on the right hand side to the left of the form, which will give you an idea this is the most important value so far this season. So as you can see, we only managed to get five players to at least 17 DV, but a few got to 16, so they should go up in the change report. So we're looking for a pretty good change report here actually. Aratali got a last minute boost to 16 DV, as did Jose Juan Casado, as did Javier Alonso. So we should have a good change report and a good squad for next season. So let's take a look at the final standings for the season. Belfast City win the division with 36 points after 14 games and a goal difference of 38. Knights of Sidonia finished second with 30 points and a goal difference of 25. Roma United finished third with 22 points and 14 goal difference. They lost their final game of the season to Godson's Knights. Red FC finished fourth on 20 points, just two points off promotion on seven goal difference. Hurricane United in the end the season in fifth place. They were only three points off promotion but with a minus eight goal difference, which shows you how close the season was. Godson's Knights could only manage sixth despite having a points total of 70. And AATB finished 7th on 14 points but with a minus 24 goal difference. Random Hearts were cut adrift of the rest of the pack with only 4 points and a minus 42 goal difference. But their manager, after another season, will probably come back stronger with a much better team. He always said that he's going to build up his money for two seasons before having a complete overhaul of the squad. But anyway, we're leaving most of these teams behind. We'll probably see Belfast City again next season, and we'll definitely see Roma United again next season. But who else, I wonder? Anyway, it's time to move on to the bit you've all been waiting for. How have our players developed for next season? It's time for that all-important change report that could determine the club's future. Before we look at the change report, though, we got this mail through on the day of the change report being made. It is an announcement that Sammy McQuiston and Bjarne Anarod are going to retire at the end of next season. Anarod was a backup keeper and I expected him to retire after the season coming up. Sammy McQuiston retiring is going to cause an interesting dilemma. When he retires, do we go and buy another strong striker or play a lone striker, youth striker like Kelso Mota up front in the hope of developing them into a world beater, even though that might sacrifice a bit of our competitiveness? Well, to find out our decision, let's see how these players actually develop. Drum roll please, it's change report time. Bjarne Anerod has gone down to 10 skill. Well, he was the backup keeper, so I expected that to happen and he is retiring at the end of the season. So that doesn't surprise me too much. So, Kanji Aratani's turn. 
Can he go up? He's gone up. He's gone up to eight skill at 23 years old. That's a good change report for him. Gavril Gorga, our free kick taking defender. He's on 12 skill, but he hasn't had the best of DVs. He's still at 12 skill, even a bit less, but that should be enough to be competitive in Division 6. Rufus Roddick, has he gone up in skill? He has, but only by one bar, but on 16 DV it was going to be difficult to get a double jump, especially at his age. Kiho Prahiado is still on 4 skill. Not surprisingly, he had an awful DV, so I was expecting that to happen. Pim van der Kreis, big hope he got 18 DV, he got the double jump! Pim van der Kreis has got the double jump. He has now a 6 skilled 18 year old, that is fantastic. Aquila Santa Maria's third defender got to 17 DV, but could only make it to 5 skill. Still, hopefully Santa Maria can double jump in the next season. Kiviatkowski has gone up in skill. He's now a 12 skill midfielder, that's a surprise there. Pira Mahaya, one of our veterans here. He has... 8 skill still. Not surprisingly because it would be very difficult to gain a skill bar at his age, even though Kiviatkowski did. Oishin Burke is still 8 skill likewise. Now we come to the big one, Sergio Kanamasas. He was 4 skill. He's got up to 5, but no double jump there. Javi Alonso is unlikely to get a double jump because he wasn't on 17 DV. And that is indeed the case. He is on 5 skill. Marius Clean was on 18, got 17 DV. There's a double jump for Marius Clean. Two double jumps so far. This is looking like a great change report so far. Raymond Hargreaves also got 17 DV. But he only managed to get to 5 skill in the end. So that's the midfield and defence and goalkeepers done. Now onto the strikers, Sammy McQuiston. Sammy McQuiston managed to get 12 skill, despite decreasing slightly, but he's still a competitive striker. Basically one Casado, only on 16 DV, so only went up one skill, so he's a 19.5 now. Kelso Moto, likewise, only got 16 DV, and he's 18.5. And that is our change report. That is it for season 29 of Knights of Sidonia's life as an expert 11 football club. See you next season for season 30. In fact, next week I'll go through an episode detailing all the changes we have made to this squad for the upcoming season. If you're too lazy to use the search bar and would like regular access to my videos, hit that subscribe button. In fact, if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button anyway. If you'd like to play Experts 11 yourself, there's a link in the description below. I've been the A person, and I'll be back next week for more Experts 11. See you guys then.